Hey everyone, and welcome to Not A Podcast. We're actually going to do another review discussion, talking all about a really crappy 2D game called Bloodstained Curse of the Moon. And it's not crappy at all. It's actually not crappy whatsoever. It's kind of funny. I just finished the review. I just have to put it all together, but... uh, did the voiceover, captured the footage, did the whole thing. You're actually going to see a lot more of the footage that I captured for this particular video, and I'll splice it all together with the, uh, with the whatever, solo review or whatever. And I'm, now I've got to make sure that I space these out so it's not ridiculous and we have two videos on the same game coming out the like roughly at the same time. That would be really foolish. So, first things first, my, my very first comment, just like what I said with the review, is this is Castlevania 3 just reimagined, okay? Anyone who argues with this or anyone that tries to be like, well, no, it's not, it's, it's doing something else, you're, you really need to look at your life and the decisions you've made because you're completely delusional. So just like in the review, I, I stipulate that like right away. Like there's, this is a Castlevania game in every which way and form, except that he doesn't have the rights to actually call it Castlevania, and it doesn't feature a character named Belmont. But seriously, in every other way, if they just change some of the names of some of the characters, and they had access to some of the you know legendary tunes, this really could have been Castlevania 36. So yeah, that was my little intro. Do you want to? Uh, do you want to have anything before we jump into the actual discussion? <laughs> Thanks for introducing me, by the way. Oh, well, everybody knows who you are. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, but at this point, nobody knew I was even here. And well, I, surprise! I even had a funny <laughs> joke prepared and everything for once, and you didn't even introduce me, you bastard. <laughs> <laughs> well, tell us your funny joke. Well. I learned something very interesting today. Did you know that the great state of Texas is actually a Canadian province? Yes, I did. (laughs) I did. (laughs) You learn something new every day. It's amazing. (laughs) amazing. I also want to uh, warn people that this will be, as our review discussions usually are, full spoilers. So if you haven't played uh, Bloodstained Curse of the Moon yet or are planning to, you probably should not listen to us as we're going to spoil everything. Very good. Very good. I, uh, I also realized something in capturing the footage today that made me kind of laugh. I mean, we, we essentially we played through a 2D game, right? And so yep. the characters, they, they don't exactly speak to each other every two seconds. It's, it's an NES game, you know? Like, it's, an, it's a classic action game it's it's like i said it's castlevania 3 for god's sakes like that's pretty much what this is and so when i i just got access to the e3 2018 demo via kickstarter it was one of the rewards uh well actually no this wasn't even a reward this was something that they just said oh yeah we'll give you guys access to the e3 demo and i'm laughing at myself now because I didn't realize that all of the characters are in Ritual of the Night. Because at first I was like, hey, where's, uh, where's that Alucard guy? And I feel like such a moron. I forgot that his name is Gebel or Jebel <laughs> or whatever the hell it is. So he's the main villain of Ritual of the Night. What? Uh, yeah. Gebel is, because I know Mir- Miriam is the main character, right? Yeah, Miriam is the protagonist, but Ge- is it Gebel? Yeah, it's Gebel. Okay, Gebel is the main uh, antagonist, and that shouldn't be a spoiler, considering it's the very first line in IGN's um, like preview <laughs> of uh, Ritual of the Night. So I was uh, like, d- where, okay. When do you find out about this? You find out as soon as the demo boots. Okay. All right. So that's why I, but I, I was like, I felt like a total moron. So if you watch my playthrough, I'm, I'm like, hey, where's that Alucard guy? <laughs> and he's like all over the place. So I'm, I'm a little confused in the way 
the two games uh, connect with each other. And I, again, this isn't about Ritual of the Night, but um, it's just that, like, over the last 48 hours, I've basically been playing nothing but Bloodstain, And I'm a little confused because... In Ritual of the Night, they talk about some event that happened 10 years ago that caused Miriam to to basically go into a, a slumber for 10 years, and she wakes up the day Gem- uh, Gebel comes back. And it seems to me, anyway, that this has taken place years after Curse of the Moon, and yet there's two characters that don't know each other. So I'm a little like, huh? But anyways, I don't, again, I don't want to go into all of this. We're here to talk about Curse of the Moon, and I assure you, at least once, I will refer to this game as Circle of the Moon. I'm just letting you know right now, <laughs> because it's, uh, it's almost guaranteed. So as with these discussions, we don't just talk about like nothing. We're going to actually break down uh, a couple of things. And since this is pretty much, like I say, like an NES game, I thought the first thing we could do is talk about like uh, the audiovisual presentation, some of the highlights, you know, some of the, the things that you really liked and uh, some of the things you didn't like, some of the things you could improve. Interestingly enough, with with the two of us, we actually share a sentiment on one aspect of the game. And I'm going to start with that right away, which was the music. I, I'm really surprised by the music and not in a good way but not not necessarily in a bad way it's not that the music is awful oh so like i said it's not like the music is awful it's just it's castlevania you know what i mean and i know this is not castlevania but castlevania features some of the very best music of all time and you can go ahead and argue with me if you want, but that's the way I feel. I feel that Castlevania is like, seriously, it's it's up there. It's probably, if you add all the tracks that are memorable, it's probably like the franchise that, uh, from the NES anyway, that's right up there with Mario and Zelda and, and all these legendary games. So that was one of the things that I was really surprised with, where I was like, I mean, it's it's okay. It's not terrible it's okay but if you play ritual of the night i was like now this is castlevania music it's got like catchy tunes in fact one of the tunes i was like uh isn't this from castlevania and like when you get into the castle you hear like oh you hear like you know like all choirs and stuff like that and i was like this is this is badass but in this it just I don't know. I, I see like tons of people giving compliments to it, saying like it's awesome and this and that. And I actually did what Steven did, which was I went and I grabbed, uh, oh, what's it called? Dracula Battle, if I remember right, is that classic uh, Castlevania CD from, uh, from Japan. I have an MP3 of it. And I would just, I listened to that as I played through the game. And so, yeah. So you want to comment on the music and then we'll talk a little bit about the visuals and stuff. Yeah, I'm glad you mentioned that because that was one of the things I talked to you about when I first played this because you didn't play it until weeks after. And you were like, everyone says the music is great, it's the same dude. And I don't know, I never, at first I almost hated it. Like it took me a while to just get used to it. And I found that I was humming the classic Castlevania tune as I was playing it. And I was doing that just by instinct. That what that's what I wanted to hear while I was playing the game. So the music did not really. After a while, I did beat this game like nine times. So after a while, I got used to it, and it it began to be a bit catchy to me. But it's still uh, not really something I remember. And that that was weird because Castlevania music, as you said, was always awesome. Yeah, exactly. Now. For me, this is just going to be for Jared, okay? But for me, that's pretty much the end of my complaints. There's a few other things I, I have that, you know, we'll, we'll get into there. But everything else I thought was absolutely phenomenal. I said that we'll start with the audio visuals. So, I'm, I mean, we're not going to break this down into like a full review. You can check out the review if you actually want that. This is more just a discussion, some of the things that we like, dislike, whatever. Uh, but what I did like was the very graphics and how like i say this is castlevania so like you get you get a lot of those familiar locations throughout the game a lot of the familiar like medusa heads are in this um those skeleton bone tower bones or whatever the hell they're called are in this 
all the classic enemies that you're used to are in this. And what I love is just that great NES feel. Like all the colors are those those dark, you know, heavily contrasted colors that the NES was known for. And this really does look like it could have been on the NES. Of course, it would have had way more flicker. It would have had probably slowdown and so on and so forth. But that is one of the single most impressive things with this game. And I think it's actually brilliant because by releasing this, how they release this, when Ritual of the Night comes out, and of course it's, it's you know, fancier graphics and a significantly different game, what I love is that we're going to have nostalgia now. Because we play through this game, and this is a really fun and enjoyable game, and next year, or whenever the hell it comes out, when you play through that other game, it's like, well, now you have all these associations, and I think this was a really brilliant way of doing this. And this game was actually a Kickstarter, um, what are they called, stretch goal. That's the only reason this game even exists, and I think now, in sort of hindsight, this should have been their plan all along because I think it's brilliant even though this is a, like a brand new game it feels like it's a game that could have been made in 1986 89 something like that so yeah I just I, I think they they they're really on to something if they play their cards right and ritual of the night turns out which I just finished an hour demo and it's awesome I I really think you know, this could replace Castlevania. They just got to fix up the tunes uh, a little bit. But but again, in the in the full version, it, it features much catchier tunes. So did you have any like one location or level design or anything in, like that that like you really enjoyed or just the whole thing? Yeah, I enjoyed the whole thing. Like like for me, it will the, the one problem with Ritual of Night is it will be hard for me to to not have pixel art. Like I really adored this game because of that. Like I wished. It had pixel art, but I understand why it doesn't. But maybe I'll get used to it. But just the, ha the fact that it will have characters I'm now familiar with, a storyline that I know and love, uh, I cannot wait for it. And I, as for a level, I don't, I don't remember. I haven't played this in a month, but it was a level where there's strong uh, win at the end. I believe it's the first, it's the fifth level or the sixth one, maybe if you remember. It's uh, where the boss is electric at the top and flies yeah, yeah. around. Really liked the visual style of that one. But yeah, the, the game was really fun to look at, really fun to play. And yeah, can't wait. I can't wait to try a Ritual of the Night myself. Uh, I, I think it will be, I don't think it will be a Mighty Number no. 9, this one. Oh, I, I can already assure you now. This is the second demo. Uh, for anyone that's interested, I have a Let's Play of both the original Kickstarter, um, what was it, like, beta not even a beta just like a little demonstration it's not really a i guess it is a demo but whatever and now i've got the e3 one and you can really see how far along the game has come and yeah the art style is not going to be for everyone but the music is great level design is is right up there with symphony of the night and all the other metroidvania styles uh castlevania games and yeah i, I i'm really liking this like i'm really really liking this and if this turns into a mighty number no. nine i'm I'm, I'm going to be totally perplexed because so far this is exactly the game that I've wanted. And speaking of story and all of that, I mean, we did say that this was going to be, you know, spoiler filled. I really liked the way they, they, they had so many different branches in, in curse of the um, curse of the moon. And I mean that in terms of story related stuff as well. I didn't realize until after that you could actually kill your partner characters or just walk right by them. I, I thought you had no choice but to talk to them. And so it took me a little while. I actually beat the game three times before I realized that you could skip like taking the partner characters. And I, I did not expect that. I really, really did not expect that. So you get, you know, three other partner characters, so four characters in total that you can use, or if you kill them all, you gain some unique abilities for Zangetsu, or what is it? Zangetsu. And, or you can go like ultra hardcore mode where you just skip them all. And that was, that was really challenging. I also really liked the idea with the veteran and casual. And I actually have an entire playthrough of, of um, what is it, Curse of the Moon 
in well veteran but the first what what is it just called the regular mode is it just uh, normal yeah it's just normal it's normal yeah. then nightmare then ultimate did you finish all three now yeah i finished all three i got all six endings great and the the variation of the endings is nothing significant it's yeah. not like you know, let's talk about those endings for a while because if you play the game uh, regularly the, the the main goal is that zengetsu actually sacrifices sacrifices himself at the end to save his friends yeah which is weird because well not weird but curious because he, he doesn't really consider them friends when you rescue them he actually wants to kill them during the story but mm -hmm. he save he saves them at the end by sacrificing and he becomes the true final boss of the game but when you do beat him in nightmare mode there's a scene at the end of that, after the cutscene. You probably saw it, I, I mm -hmm. imagine. I was wondering, what, 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 what is your interpretation of that? Because he seems to be in the a future. city somewhere in the future. Yeah, that's what it, it looks in like. In the afterlife? And like, what the heck? Do you think no, this, is, I, I this know, will man. be in Ritual of the Night? Like, that would be sick if Zangensu is like a boss or reference in some way because they do say that they could not save him but they did save his soul okay well i can't talk about this <laughs> why not uh well i can't talk about this because of spoilers and spoilers for a game you haven't played so that kind of tells you something of right ritual there. of the night yes for the first hour yeah well, go go away, go away then. I, I, uh, spoil it away then. If it's the first hour, I don't mind it. Well, it's uh, the demo ends with you coming into a room and David Hater, uh, his voiceover. I, I love that guy's like every. It's always you know like Solid Snake. I just want him to say like Metal Gear, <laughs> <laughs> and and it's Zengetsu, and he's the final uh, boss of the. Awesome uh, man. <laughs> yeah. yeah right. <laughs> Right there, like, Ritual of the Night now is one of the top games. I can't wait. This and Mon Monster Crown there, man. I can't wait to play these next year. Man, that's sick that they did that. Cool. Yo, it's sick. It's very, very, very sick. glad to hear that. Yeah, so... Uh, how And they don't seem... That's why I was telling you, like, I'm a little confused, okay? Because you meet Alfred along the the way and alfred is looking for some book and he's like miriam he's like it's been a while and uh you know don't get in my way or i'll end you type of thing and you're like oh damn man he's like alfred went from being like one of your weakest characters with really powerful magic to like a total badass <laughs> in ritual of the night and did and you like were you able to be good with alfred uh i find that i only used him in a few bosses because of his uh was it a, a yellow power yeah. up there that yeah, yeah. he was very useful against? I think it was the the succubus. I found it very useful against and a few other bus. Because did you did you beat bus rush mode yet? That's the one thing I have not done yet. Yeah, for it took me like that. Bus rush is really really fun. You should stream that actually. It's a, a blast to do, and it took me a while to beat it, but it's not that hard because it's not it's the bosses are for, are from normal mode. They're not the harder bosses okay. from nightmare and uh ultimate, ultimate or yeah yeah but yeah it's a lot of fun and you have to very strategically because you can only use one power up uh you can only use the power up once oh per yeah boss. yeah okay so you, you and you can only heal twice so it, it's a lot of fun you should try it but yeah i only found him useful and i cannot s understand how some people are able to beat the entire game using a solo alfred run i don't know wow. how they do that Wow, he's he's actually the best character to use on all bosses if you can get that that yellow ball power up thing. He 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 like he can finish off the final boss like within I don't know like uh, maybe two rotations of the mm. the whole cycle where you have to jump around and all of that. And yeah, so like he he's crazy powerful with that move and with his ice move. His ice one is is really sick. Uh, but other than that, I just used him for his shield to get to like okay. certain areas and Did stuff like that. Did you play all all three modes on veteran? Yep, I, I played the whole yeah. game on veteran. I never yeah. played it on casual. Yeah, that's that's a good idea. That's what I I ended up doing. I started and I beat the game five times all on uh, casual. And the challenge just is not there at all. 
And even on veteran, once you're used to the game, I found that the only mode that gave me a problem was Nightmare. I believe the final, final boss in my Nightmare took me a few tries to do in veteran, but by that time you have like 100 million lives, so... That's perhaps, you, you mentioned the music at the beginning, and I agree with that. Maybe the difficulty, and but honestly, I don't mind it. I don't mind it. I think the difficulty is is good enough because it challenge, it, it, it still challenged me, but I, I, I can understand how some veterans will not be, would have preferred it to be a bit more harder because just the fact that I was able to complete it on veteran should tell you that this is not that hard of a game. Yeah, I mean, I think that's fair. I think that's fair. Saying that, you know, it's not it's not the the hardest thing ever. I I think it was like it it was fair. I I think is a good word to describe how I feel about it. Yeah, I it. noticed that the knockback doesn't actually occur when you're in stairs. Did you notice that? Yeah, that's just like Castlevania. That's not in Castlevania, when you're in the stairs, don't you get knocked back? Too? No, no, that's the only way you're protected is on stairs. I thought you did in Castlevania 1. No, that that's that's the classic thing. Go check a okay. uh, thing when we're done. Go check a thing and you'll see. That's the that was they didn't program um, that in. Now, that said, you you couldn't do what you can do here. Like here you can jump onto stairs. You can't jump off, but you can jump onto stairs, which is pretty cool. Okay. But I mean, maybe I'm wrong, but I'm pretty sure I'm right well, about that. You're probably that. right, but I really I I thought that you could maybe just in Castlevania 1, maybe not. No, but, well, check, dude. Check, man. My yeah, my memory, after. my memory isn't what uh, what it used to be. That's for sure. But um, but the thing is, I found that the game wasn't uh, cheap. Like I died. I died. I'm not gonna lie. I died uh, just in the playthrough. I just did. I spent the last uh, hour and twenty minutes playing through the game on normal mode, but veteran. In order to to get footage for this and to get footage for the uh, for the review, and I'm not gonna lie, I died a couple of times because you know of the the pushback. It, it happens. Like you'll jump, and it's not that enemies pop out out of nowhere. It's nothing like that. They they actually really design this well. It's more that you know you have fairies going around and you have those Medusa head type things, and sometimes it's like an axe. You know, like you'll jump and you didn't see the axe coming. It's your fault. It's not the game. Yeah. But you didn't see an axe coming from behind you. It hits you and pushes you off. Like, and <laughs> I, I'm okay with that. Like, there were a few times my cat looked at me because I was swearing up a storm, but it was never. It was never like Castlevania, cheap, ridiculous. You yeah. know, where you got like mermen jumping up right as you go to make your jump. I really love the pacing too of the game. Like, for me, I, often this was like a game where I said, okay, I'll just play for a few minutes and then I end up playing through the entire game because you can beat the game in it every time i clocked the game it was usually around an hour and 15 minutes i think nice. the last time was under an hour but it's usually around that time and i'm sure speedrunners can probably beat the game in like 15 minutes or whatever but it's it's around an hour 15 an hour 30 minutes to beat the game so it's it's not that's that's you said it perfectly it's not frustrating because it never uh, punishes you too much and it's not that long of a game it's meant to be played multiple times yeah and I think that's the best compliment, really. And I like Ahmed didn't know. I told him on the uh, on the podcast. I think it was on the podcast. Yeah. When, yeah. Uh, and and yeah, like he was all shocked. And and I think a lot of people may be shocked. Like this is not the type of game, guys, that you just go through, get that ending, and then away you go. That's not how this works. Play it a second time, and then after you're done the second time, go on Google. And uh, and check out how to unlock all the different endings because there are some variations. Like one ending, you have to say kill one or two uh, partner characters, or not even kill, but like just don't don't take them with you, and you'll unlock it, one variation of the ending. Another one is you have to kill all three of the partner characters, absorb like one of their powers, and then finish the game. Um, and then when you play it the second time, uh, Zengetsu has all of those powers, but now this time you can go ahead and recruit all the different, like, other characters, which is, uh, it's really, really cool. I, I honestly think... Yeah, it it's, it's really... When I found out that you could kill the characters, man, it's a lot of fun. You don't, you don't have the characters with you, but the double jump is extremely useful. Man, I love that. It's actually hard when you go back and play on normal 
and you play with Zengensu and I still instinctively think I have the double jump, but you mm -hmm. don't. It's 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 really fun to do. Yeah. And that's why like like I just finished this. I'm gonna go and play the Kickstarter demo again because there's a whole huge section of the of the demo that I missed because I'm one of these O C D guys that has to go everywhere on the map. And so there was like this one area where I was like, oh, okay, let's go here. So I went there, but that triggered the final boss of the demo. And I was like, oh, damn it. <laughs> so there's, there's still like a, a whole section. Now I say that, but I'm not a hundred million percent sure because when I finished it, it said like total time to completion, like 57 minutes or, or something like that. And now I'm wondering, like, I'm pretty sure it's because I, I fought against Zengetsu. I'm, I'm sure I'm sure that's what did it, uh, but I'm not, I'm not, you know, not a hundred percent sure. So I'm not sure if it's time-based or whatnot. So I want to go back uh, probably after we do this, I'm going to go back and, and play the demo again. Cause it's, it's freaking awesome, man. And when you meet these characters again and like Gebel and, and Zengatsu and uh, it's just awesome. It's so wicked. I was do, like, do we know when circle of the moon, what year it takes place in? Because I think, during the cre the intro of uh, Ritual of the Night, they do say what here it, Ritual of the Night takes place in. So maybe we could have a an idea of the timeline. I'll have to check. I I don't know offhand, but uh, I like this obviously takes place. And you just said Circle of the Moon, by the way. You you beat me. A curse of the Moon. Yeah, <laughs> it's, I'm surprised. I I did not do that more often. Oh, well, me too. So I'm I'm positive Curse of the Moon is like happens first it has yeah to. yeah no no there's no there's no denying den denying this but it's just i would like to know because you said miriam was in a 10-year coma mm -hmm. before so this has to be like uh, especially since gebel is not a final boss well or one of the main baddies so this will be interesting yeah it is going to be interesting and i want to see how they link this in to like what we we already played like who is the final boss in 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 curse of the moon like that first when you go through normal what the hell is that that creature i forgot but i think she has a name because that's going to be important to know afterwards because i like in in uh, ritual of the night gebel is with someone and hmm. it's like I don't know if it's meant to be the same creature or if it's if it's something else. I'm not sure. Anyways, go watch that uh, that playthrough I did. It's not. It's really not going to spoil much. The first hour of the game. I mean, it's not. And I think it's the first hour of the game. I don't even know. <laughs> no, but so. yeah, just the fact that you told me that you fight Zenkensu, man. That's that's crazy. Oh yeah, man. And uh, I thought it was going to die because I, I you like at. The, the end there i'm like okay he's like punishing me big time here <laughs> and i'm like uh there's no health bar there's no nothing i'm like i've been beating on this guy's ass for like five minutes what the hell is going on and then it finally triggered like a, a cutscene, but it's the most lame cutscene ever because it's just a character walks in is like oh zengetsu and then it just the whole screen just goes black to a static like uh picture and just says like bloodstain coming soon type thing i was like well yeah. that's kind of lame the way they ended it but whatever so anyways what are your final thoughts on this so we don't have a 20 hour uh, discussion uh my final thoughts is i'm still maintaining not to take away anything from ritual of the night but i'm still maintaining that this will be better than ritual of the night i'd be happy to be proved wrong but this was amazing uh, i love when these things happen and so far this is in content a contender for game of the year i know that's crazy but for me this was an awesome game like i said i beat it nine times i actually had to delete one of my save files because i was so addicted to this and i actually hope that we will get in a few years if a, a sequel in to this in the ways that uh, this will actually be an 8-bit castlevania sequel i'd like to see another one i hope they don't i i hope they don't go exclusively the metroidvania route and give us a few more of these because this was awesome. Yeah, and I'm I'm right there with you in not I don't think okay whoa 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 English. 
I don't know if this is going to be better than Ritual of the Night or anything like that, but I'm right there with you in saying that I would love to have both. Like, I, I think this, in my opinion, and I mentioned this somewhere else, that Bloodstain is going to go down in history, I think, as the single best Kickstarter of all time. Like, in the sense that they actually delivered what people wanted. Because, like, Shenmue 3 and others, there's no way it's going to ever live up to what people expect and, and all this jazz. But here, we had, we had Iga come out... And basically say he wanted to make another Symphony of the Night game. He wanted to make a console-based Metroidvania game. And and the fans, you know, like, I, I kicked in like 120 bucks, 150 bucks, something like that. And not only is he working away on that, but we ended up getting this as a result. And I, I really, I really, really believe that at the end of the day, this is going to be like, like an, you know, an amazing action-based like quote unquote Castlevania, and I really have I, I'm, I have really high hopes that Ritual of the Night is going to end up being like a, another Symphony of the Night, like just a superb Metroidvania style game. Because man, there's quests they added to it. There's stores. There's alchemy. There's like it's sick, man. And if they tie it into this and they do follow it up with additional 2D. Uh, you know, like whatever action based games like this, and we continue to get some Metroidvania games, I'm gonna be the happiest guy alive. And I'll, I'll be shocked if we don't get a sequel to this and to the, the main game. And I'm, I'm sure both are gonna sell supremely well because when I checked, Bloodstain was like within the top five on the eShop. I don't know if it's still there or where it is now, but it, it must be selling well. Yeah, I think it was in the top five for a few weeks. It actually was number one for a while, so I think the Switch sales will be very good, yeah. And with that, all I'll say is I hope you guys enjoyed, and be sure to check out my full review of the game. That goes into pretty much, you know, a little bit more detail of, than what we uh, discussed here today. So thank you for joining, Stephen, and uh, we'll catch you all later.